Hello everyone, welcome to this series on desertification. So basically I've decided to start this series it's because the way people around the world speculate on the meaning of desertification is in a manner that it's not required to and therefore I'm going to explain the visual synthesis on desertification whereby we can get a clear meaning on desertification and therefore we're going to speak on the context of desertification we're going to speak of the global drylands we're going to speak on the way to combat desertification and also in general we're going to speak about the United Nations Convention to combat desertification, the UNCCD. And generally, we're going to speak on the relationship between the desertification context on the way it affects food security, on the way it affects water scarcity and access, and also we're going to speak about its relationship with sustainable development and of course the major issue of climate change. And therefore, desertification is, seems to be and is said to be by the researchers that it's one of the major issues which causes or brings about climate change. And therefore, we're going to speculate on the true meaning and the context of desertification. So please be with me on, in all these episodes of the series. It's me, your host, Ramir Abdul Basit. Let's get started. Often, when people think of the drylands, they associate them with deserts and hostile living conditions, economic hardship, and water scarcity. But that is not what drylands are all about. If managed well, the drylands are also fertile and capable of supporting the habitats, crops and livestock that sustain nearly one third of humanity. Drylands offer opportunities for local populations and provide tangible regional and global benefits. For a variety of reasons, such as market failures, weak investment incentives, gender inequality and some enduring myths, the benefits to be gained of working with the drylands and their vibrant communities are not fully realized. There's a genuine risk and rapidly growing concern that desertification will undermine nascent opportunities and the world will lose inherent potential of the drylands. With regards to the definition of the drylands, drylands are arid, semi-arid and dry subhumid areas. In the context of sustainable development, the term generally excludes hyper-arid areas, meaning the deserts, when land degradation occurs in walled drylands, it often creates desert-like conditions. In environmental terms, drylands are characterized by the following features. Low, infrequent, irregular and unpredictable precipitation. Large variations between day and nighttime temperatures. Soil containing little organic matter and a lack of water. And lastly, plants and animals adapted to climate variables, meaning drought resistant, soil tolerant, heat resistant and able to cope with a lack of water. The following are the main types of human use that are found in drylands. Number one, we have rangelands which are about 59%. Number two, we have cultivated land which is about 30%. Number three is the urban areas which are about 2%. Generally, water scarcity is the predominant feature of drylands. While heavy rain may occur, rainfall typically varies, sometimes dramatically, from season to season and year to year. In arid and semi-arid zones, the water balance is negative at year basis, meaning that more water evaporates than precipitates during one year. Therefore, water is scarce most of the time and human settlements may cluster around rare sources of water, such as rivers, springs, wells, water catchment, reservoirs and oases. Generally, here are the dryland facts that the world needs to know. Number one, the total population of the world's drylands is 2 billion, excluding hyper-arid, meaning the deserted areas. Drylands are thus home to almost one in three people in the world today. Number two, drylands support 50% of the world's livestock. Number three, the majority of the world's dryland population is in developing countries. Number four, drylands store 46% of the planet's carbon inventory. Number five, drylands comprise 44% of all cultivated land. Number six, plant species endemic to the drylands make up 30% of the plants under cultivation today. Number seven, the largest drylands areas are in Australia, China, Russia, the United States and Kazakhstan. And number eight, at least 99% of the surface area of six countries including Botswana, Burkina Faso, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Moldova and Turkmenistan is classified as drylands.